go look in a look at a scripture in Luke the twenty second chapter. Twenty two, twenty second chapter. And before I get started, as you're finding that, I remind the ladies that are here of the ladies' party, Christmas party this Saturday, four o'clock, right? Four o'clock, and and invite all of you. And you all are invited, and hope all of you can come. And like Amy said, uh, it's not a big deal. Just come, even if just come. Just be here and uh, enjoy the time with them. So that'll be for Saturday. Luke 22, and I want to start reading with verse number 24. Whoa. That ain't even. Mmm. I'm in 22, ain't he? It's talking about, I don't know why. I, yeah, it is. Yes, it is. I have got the right thing. All right. Verse 24. <laughs> don't ever go by what you first see. Verse 24 of Luke chapter 22. And, and there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. Amen. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, is it not he that sitteth at meat? But I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptation. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Behold, Satan hath desired you to have you, has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for uh, the lessons and the, the teachings of your word. Lord, it's, 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 if we live by it even today, God, we what a difference we could make in our lives and in the lives of others. God, how much, how much better it would flow, Lord, in, 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 in religion and Christianity and among the brothers and sisters in Christ if we would simply live by your word. Lord, I pray that you would speak your word to our heart, God. Let us receive something from this reading tonight, Lord, from the, from the words that you place in my heart to share with these people. Lord, in the name of Jesus, thank you for each one that's here. Bless them. God bless each one with a special blessing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, hallelujah, praise God. As we read the, begin to read here in Luke, the 22nd chapter, uh, and uh, uh, this was pre-crucifixion. Jesus was trying to prepare them. He was trying to prepare them and probably himself also because he knew the time was nearing of his crucifixion. He knew the time was, was at hand for for him to fulfill the purpose that he came to this earth for. Amen. And he was preparing the disciples. And we read several passages in the Gospels of, about how he, he taught and he told the disciples about, about the temple tearing it down in three days. And, you know, in three days he'd raise it up again. And several different passages of Scripture. And, but it seemed like every time that we read of him trying to prepare the disciples for his crucifixion, they always had their minds somewhere else. They always thought he was talking about something else. They didn't really grasp what was really going on. And that's evident in the fact that even after his, his crucifixion and after his burial, they were despondent and, and discouraged because they thought that he had left them forever. They thought that he had brought them and taught them and they had followed him all these, these three and a half years and, and stood up for him and, and watched him do miracles. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's kind of obvious that they thought that was it. 
Amen. Apparently, they didn't listen when he was trying to tell them what was coming. And, and you know, it, it would behoove us in this day and age to pay attention to what the Lord is trying to tell us. How many wants to pay attention? How many wants to receive whatever the Lord is giving? But he's preparing them for the, the crucifixion and, and what he must have been feeling, the burden that he must have been feeling. And, and, and I don't care. I mean, he had a human side. He was man. He was all God and he was all man. And the, I'm sure the humanity, the human side of him, dreaded the pain of the cross. It dreaded the, the agony and the beating and the, the, what he knew was facing him. And there he was trying to bear his heart to the disciples, trying to prepare them for the calamity and the, the seemingly the tragedy that they was going to be facing. And the only thing they could come up with and the only thing they had on their mind was who's the greatest. Amen. Uh, his reaching and his, his, his reaching for them. And the Bible says there was great, there was a strife among them. There was dissension among them. In other words, they was trying to figure out who was going to run the church when Jesus was gone. Who's going, to be the, who's going to be the one in charge after he leaves? And who's going to be the one that, that takes this thing and, and goes with it? Hey, Jesus was about to die, and, who, and who's, who's going to take over? And there's a, there, there's, a, there's a lot of discussion, and there's a lot of, of discussion in, in today's church under the same heading, amen? Who's the best? Who's the big? Who's the one? I want to tell you, it ain't none of us what we really do. Amen? Hallelujah. And you'd be surprised at, at the, you know, I, I, I look at, at big, huge churches, and you know there have got to be some ego. There's even ego sometimes in small churches. Amen. And I can just imagine the big, humongous, mega churches. And, and, and I'm sure there's people that's, that's arguing and fussing over who's going to do this and who's going to do that and why, you know, amen. But here they were. They, they, they. You know, people tend to want to be important. Uh, you may say, well, I really don't care. Well, in, in a way, we want to be significant. Maybe not so much important, but how many would like to have a You can be, and I, you know, I'm talking tonight about the significant servant. I want, I want you to, I want those words to be the title of my message tonight, the significant servant. I want to make a difference in people's lives. Amen. I want to make a difference in your life. I want to make a difference in, in, in the people's lives that I come around. But, uh, but people, there's some that go to extra length. There's, there's people that go to extra lengths and take extra steps and go overboard trying to be important and trying to seek after and chase after significance. Amen. Trying to be different. Trying to be uh, head above the, the next one or trying to be noticed. And, and this world is full of it. Amen. Amen. Everywhere you look in, in the culture that we live in, amen, they'll, they'll do anything nowadays to get attention. Amen. They'll, they'll and, you know, and I, I'm not speaking against this per se. I'm not, I'm, I'm not condemning. But, buddy, they'll, they'll, pierce, they'll pierce themselves. They'll paint themselves up. They'll do all kinds of outlandish stuff because they want significant. Amen. They, 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 they Ah, uh, I have to kind of watch, watch. But people just go to extra lengths in the society we live in today to try to be significant. But you can't gain significance. We, you know, they, 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 we do so many things. But Jesus responded to them. And every problem that I read in the Word of God, every time that a problem arose, every, and every time that the disciples had some kind of thing going on, Jesus always had a response for it. Can I tell you, Jesus always has a response for the problem that you're facing. It may not be what you want to hear. How many times has God ever directed you to do something that was uncomfortable? You, re you really didn't want to hear that. You really didn't want to, to take handle it in that way. But you knew if you didn't do it the way God told you to, that you was going to pay the price. Hallelujah. I want to be a, I want to be a significant servant. I'm not worried about it. And I don't think anybody in this place tonight is worried about having your head and having your rank above everybody else. How many wants to be a servant in the hand of God? How many wants to be a servant to the people of God? Amen. We've got to have service. We've got to have those that are willing to serve. 
Amen. And Jesus told them there. He said, uh, but ye shall not be so, but he, he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. In other words, he asked, who's the greatest, the one that's serving or the one that's being served? Amen. And Jesus says that greatness is not measured by being served. Greatness is measured by doing the serving. Hallelujah. If you want to be great in the kingdom of God, we've got to have the attitude and, and, the, and the outlook and the personality and the, and the drive of a servant. Hallelujah. He said, you that, that's the one that's serving is the one that's great. But there's so many people that want, that want to be served. There's so many people that want to sit, you know, hey amen. We're living in the day that I think people think you can just drive up to, to religion, to the religious menu and pick whatever you want and you just get it the way you want it. Sometimes we don't get it the way we want it. I'm surprised that, they ain't, that the churches ain't got a drive through yet, that you, people can just... Pull up to and say, I want this, tell me this. And we can type out a message and I can give it to them out the window. You know, there I've heard that there's drive-up funeral homes now. There's a tithing out. Thank you, sister, while well, I looked into that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But, I mean, if everybody wants God on their terms. And, and they want the... and. John F. Kennedy made a statement about the, and everybody knows what he said, and I guarantee you all remember what he, ask not what you can do, what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Amen. And I thank God for what the family, being in the family of God brings me. I thank God that I can come into church, into services, and we can worship God, and, and something happens, and God blesses us and he he pours his presence and he refreshes us but I don't cut I'm not work God what can I do for you I want to be a servant how many wants to have the heart of a servant hallelujah you'll never be but Jesus said the you know he told him said the one that that's doing the servant is the one that's great amen we just can't you know, you just can't get the benefits of service you've got to be a servant also and so many people just want the benefits of being served. Uh, you know, preacher, when we come to church, tell it to us where we can leave with a smile on our face. Can I tell you, there's been times, a lot of times I've left church after sitting through a message that I've left church holding my toes and, and, and it, man, it's, it's got me. You, it's, it don't happen, and I'm not saying it's always going to be like that, but we have got to, we gotta, we got to take it all. We've got to, we got to learn to be a servant. Amen. But in verse number 29, there's some things that point to be to being a significant servant. And if you want to be significant in the kingdom of God, you're going to have to be a servant. And it's an honor to be a significant servant. There's some things that the significant servant's going to rejoice and receive that, that somebody that's not that servant is not going to have. Amen? Hallelujah. In verse number 29. And, and start with verse number 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. In other words, you, you've been with me. You've stuck with me. You've, you've, you've been through, with me through the, the tough times when they tried to kill me. When, when the Sadducees and the Pharisees and, and all the religious leaders of the time was coming against me. Disciples, you've stuck with me and you've, you've been here. Folks, I want to tell you, stick with Jesus. Can I encourage somebody tonight? I don't care what. What comes your way? I, I don't care what you have to face. Stick with Jesus. Amen. Stick with Jesus. Stick with the, the church. And when I say the church, I, you know, I hope every one of you stay here. I hope God don't lead you nowhere else. But when I say stick with the church, stick with the body. Stick with Christ. Stick with his, his people. Stay in the kingdom of God. Stay in the ship. Stick with Jesus. Amen. He said, you have, you have, you've been with me. You've continued with me. In my temptation. And I like this verse. The first thing that, that the significant servant gets. Is they get to be. He said I appoint unto you a kingdom. I appoint unto you a kingdom. I bestow upon you a kingdom. As my father hath appointed unto me. Amen. In other words, he said, when I came, 
And when I came to this earth and I left the throne room of heaven, amen, said I was bestowed a kingdom by my father. I was bestowed, this was bestowed upon me and I became the heir of this kingdom. I became the heir of eternal life. I became the heir of blessings and miracles and and and. and, and I became, it became mine. He said, but when I, I bestow it unto you, that's what the significant servant is going to receive. He's bestow, he's, uh, he's appointing a kingdom to us. You're part of something. You're not just a part of something. You have, you have authority in the kingdom of God. Every one of us are, a, a, God has bestowed upon us, each one of us, a kingdom. If we'll be that servant that he, that he will. When you look, when you look back, When you look back at the end of your life and when you look back at when you grow old and you begin to look back over your life, you're going to realize that nothing is more important than what God gives you. Amen. Can I make that statement again? In life, at the end of life, there's nothing that's more important than what God gives us. And referring back again to the, the, the funeral today and President Bush and his estate. And I, I read somewhere what they, he, he was, his estate was worth. I forgot what it was. It was way on up yonder, and he, you know, that had been handed down to him. That, that was grand and that was great, but that didn't mean anything for him at that moment. But what God had given him and what God had given is what changed and what made the difference. Amen. And God has bestowed something upon us that I don't really believe we really recognize what He is. He has brought heaven to us. He has placed heaven in our hands. He has placed salvation, redemption, healing, miracles, a a friend, uh, everything that heaven holds. He he has placed it in our hands. He's bestowed it upon us. I want to tell you that. That's exciting to me. He said, I have appointed I appoint unto you a kingdom. It can't be taken away by any devil in hell because he has given it to us. Amen. We're joint heirs with him. In the in the Greek, the kingdom means royalty or a realm or to rule. So in other words, he's given us a realm of royalty to rule in. Amen. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Hallelujah. We're, you, you need to realize, we need to realize who we are and what we've been given. Uh, the, he appoints us to, to, to our own. I mean, be you. You're, you, you. you're an owner of this kingdom. God has given the kingdom to you. He's given it to you. Be you. Can't nobody beat me being me. Be you. Be yourself. Be what God wants you to be. Put yourself in God's hand. Don't try to be like somebody else. Hallelujah. Can't nobody be you but you. Amen. And he has put us in a zone. You know, a zone. I've uh, heard of basketball players when they, when they get hot, you know, shooting. I've heard the announcer say, boy, they in that zone. You know, or a pitcher. Pitcher of baseball, he'll, he's, he'll hone in and men seem like everything he throws, they're swinging at it and missing and they're striking and they can't hit. And they'll say that pitcher's in his zone, you know. But God has given, he wants us to get in our zone. He wants you to be the best that you can be. And the best that you can be is a servant. And we've got to keep that in our mind. We've got to keep that in our heart. The very best I can be for God is being the best servant I can be. And once you get used, once you practice, once you get in the the flow of being a servant, once you get in the zone of being a servant, you'll find that it comes easy. It comes with blessings. It comes with joy. And it comes with happiness. And it fills your heart with satisfaction knowing that you're able to be you and to to work. God, God can use you just like you are, just the personality you have we are all different amen we're all different but we need to be the best servant and the best us that we can be God called us to God called you to be you and I know he changed us he forgave us he 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 washed our sins away but we still are us you're still you amen and we still can be the best servant that we can be. You can't, you know, I, I, want God, I want everything that God has 
for me. He said, I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me. This is our time. Somebody say, this is my time. This is my time. Carry what God has blessed you with and share it with those around you. Amen. And we're going to get rewarded for operating in the place that he's put us in. Can I tell you, the, war, excuse me, the reward's going to be great. The reward is going to be great. And God knows what you can do. God knows what you're capable of because he created you. Amen. You're not going to fool him. How many wants to be the very best you can be? And that is a servant. Amen. Satan is going to attempt to stop you. The second thing that a significant servant is going to have to put up with is the, the attacks of Satan and the desire that Satan has to sift you. Amen. Can I tell you, don't come without a price. Being a servant and reaping the rewards of a servant does not come without a price. In verse number 31, he looked at Simon and he said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Somebody desires your destruction. Amen. Somebody desires and wants your destruction. When you, when you do what God calls you to do, you're going to have enemies and that main enemy is going to be Satan. Amen. The, the main enemy is going to be Satan. And everything that he, that, that, but he, he wants the kingdom of God destroyed. He wants, he, 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 and like I, I've mentioned it several times, when you face trials and you face battles and, and, and the, uh, Satan attacks you, he's, he, it's not personal. He's really not so much after you as he is the kingdom. And you just happen to be standing in his way. I'll stand in his way all the time. I, I, I'll die standing in the way of Satan. Amen. But he, he's going to, the devil asked, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have you. You know what? If you're a significant servant, the devil's going to ask for you by name. He's going to approach the throne room of God and he's going to say, man, I'll tell you what. I think I can bring old Colby down. I think I can put a temptation on him, but he won't be able. I desire to have him. And that's what, and any of you in this place, I could call every one of your names. I just said his right off the, but every one of us, if we are a servant of God, Satan desires to have us. And he desires to, to, to bring destruction to our life. Amen. But he, he don't really desire the insignificant. He desires that significant servant, that one that, 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 that puts himself out there to be a servant. Amen. He said he desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Sift. He puts them back in the, the, the old days when they had the wheat and the tares. And we know the story about the wheat and the tares. The Bible says, uh, you know, Jesus told them, said, let them grow together. But it happened literally. They, he used that example because that's what they had to literally deal with when they planted wheat. In that, that day, there was tares that came up among the wheat. And Jesus used what they knew about to minister to them about spiritual things. Amen. So they, they knew what it was to plant wheat and then look out and there'd be tares in it. And, and they would let, it, let them grow together. They wouldn't try to pull the tares up for fear that they would, they would damage the wheat. He said, but the, he, Satan desires you that he may have to sift you as wheat. And, and during harvest time, that the harvester would go out there and they'd take the tares, they'd pull it all up and they'd put it in what they call a sifter. And they'd begin to shake it. And they'd They'd shake it. They'd just shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. How many ever felt like, Lord, how, how much more am I have to be shaking? You ever had a good shaking? But they, they would, that's what the devil does. Sometimes he, he, he just wants a shaking. And they shake shaking. And when they'd, they'd catch it on a windy day, and they'd take that, that wheat and that what they were shaking in that sifter, and they'd throw it up in the air, and the shaft, the wheat, the tares would blow out would blow away and the wheat would fall back down in the, the sifter and there the separation would end. And I always thought it was odd. The Bible talks about us, about the, the kingdom of God and the, and the people that are right being the wheat. And, and he, he, I thought it odd that the devil told Simon, that Jesus told Simon that the devil wanted to sift him as wheat. In other words, 
just go ahead and let him sift you because you're wheat, so you're going to be all right. Can I tell somebody tonight, I don't care how much you're shaken. I don't care what you have to go through. I don't care how many times you get thrown up and the wind hits you. When you fall back down in the sifter, you got joy in your heart to know, hey, I'm still here. Hey, man. I'm still here. I'm, I'm still in the sifter. I may have to go through another shaking. And they'd, that would fall and then they'd look around and then they'd shake it again because they wanted to get it all, all the tares out. And they'd shake it in and they'd throw it up in the air again. The wind would blow the, the tares and the chaff away and the, the wheat. And after enough shaking, it was only the wheat that was left in the sifter. Hallelujah. How many's glad you're still in the sifter? How many's glad that when you know the trials come and you know the shaking comes, you know that you will still be here when it's over? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I'm trying to too much on Wednesday night because y'all are cold and it's. <laughs> the tears blow away. But that shaking causes some loosening and some separating. And, and sometimes to be the servant that we need to be. There has to be some shaking and there has to be some loosening and there has to be some separating. And I don't know how many times, Lord, I don't know how many times you're going to throw me in the air. But as long as I fall back in the sifter, I know I'm all right. Amen. Hallelujah. That should kind of make us thankful for the, for the tough times. When we look around and we've still got faith. When we, when we ought to have done thrown in the towel, but we're still here. When, when we should be out yonder somewhere, but we're still here. When we went through enough hell that it would broke a good man, but we're still here. Hallelujah. The significant servant will get sifted. You will. I promise you, you're going to get sifted. But as long as you fall back in the sifter, every time you fall, shout hallelujah. Because you're still here. Amen. You know you're a significant servant. When you didn't get blown away by the wind. When, when, when it seemed like it was the storm was tough and, and you it, it, you know, but you but you didn't get blown away. You're still here. You hung in. You stayed. You hung, you you kept your faith in the Lord. Amen. But it didn't end there. And I'll close with this brief little if you didn't shout on about being a servant, and if you didn't shout about being sifted and getting to fall back in the sifter, you ought to really praise God for this next one. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. Hallelujah. I have prayed for you, Simon. I know you're going to go through the test. I know you're going to, how many is glad to know that God, that Jesus, that, that the master of the universe has prayed. And he said, Simon, I've prayed for you that when you're converted, that you'll strengthen the brethren. Converted there doesn't necessarily, and I begin to look that up and it don't necessarily, it didn't really mean when he was saved or brought, it meant when he was changed. When you, when, you, when you go through that change, when you're, when you're changed into what I want you to be, Simon, you're going to strengthen the brethren. And I, just know this. The sifting and the shaking and the loosening that you're going through to make yourself that significant servant. When you become truly what God wants you to be, you'll be able to help those that need strength. Say, so when you're converted, you're going to, Strength, you, I want you to go strengthen thy brethren. And then he told Peter all of that, told him that Satan desired to have him. And the next thing we, he tells Peter that when I'm crucified, before the cock crows three times, you're, you're going to deny me. Before uh, you, You're going to deny me thrice before the cock crows. So he knew that Peter was fixing to face some, some tests and trials. Can I, can I tell you, God already knows what you're going to face, but he's already prepared you if you'll just be the servant that he wants you to be. Amen. Hallelujah. I know it's not about if you really want to be 
if you really want to be instrumental in God's hands, we have to we have to realize that we're that we're not beyond test. We're not beyond the shaking and the and and the wind, and we're not beyond that. But we're also not beyond His prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Praise the Lord. I hope I've shared something with you that's that's helped you tonight. Maybe some of you are going through some sifting right now. Maybe every one of us. I don't know. But I just want you to know he's prayed for you. And you're still here. And God still loves you. 